Hello, and uh, welcome to the latest presentation of the Rift Valley webinar series. My name is Andrew Harvey, and I'll be the host for today's talk, which will be given by Martin Mouse and is titled Tanzanian Cushitic History. So among this audience, Martin Mouse, of course, needs no introduction, where he's been an active contributor and overall participant since the Rift Valley Network's inception over five years ago, but I'll do it anyways. Martin's research is clustered around four themes. One, Cushitic languages. Two, language and identity. Three, diathesis and derivation. And four, and two languages. His research on Cushitic languages consists of the description of aspects of grammar, lexicon, and verbal arts of the Tanzanian languages Iraq, Alagwa, which are both in our Rift Valley area, and Konso, which is spoken rather further afield in Ethiopia as well as Somali. He's working on the history of the South Cushitic languages and on a typological overview of Cushitic, perhaps most saliently as part of his ongoing funded project, Linguistic History of East Africa, or LEAF for short. Mm -hmm. Martin's research on language and identity derives from an interest in Creole languages and started seriously with a study of the mixed language Ma'a Mbugu spoken in the Pare Mountains of Tanzania. His interest in morphology is centered around the study of valency changing verbal derivations such as causatives, middles, and passives in Iraq, Kanso, Tunen, and Serer, as well as comparatively in Africa. Uh, the Bantu languages that Martin has published on include the Tanzanian Bantu languages, uh, Mbugwe, Hare, and uh, Ma'a, and uh, further afield uh, languages such as uh, Tunen and Yokon in uh, Cameroon. So please, uh, Martin, the floor is yours. Uh, uh, thank you, Andrew, and to, uh, to be reminded of my history. <laughs> Uh, at, at the moment, I'm I'm in East Africa in my mind, and uh, yes, uh, so today's uh, presentation is very much a, a kind of a summary of of our project. So I've put here and the leaf team. Um, it's uh, uh, this this was the abstract that I sent to you when you uh, pushed me, and I said. Uh, I'm not going to talk about the the contact with uh, Sonjo, and um, I see it as an appetizer for our conference that is in the beginning of June, and I emphasize again its result of teamwork. Uh, so I will talk about these issues, but first, and I will try to do it uh, uh, within a lim yeah half an hour, I hope, so that we have plenty of time for discussion. Um, so I'm going to present conclusions with a snippet of evidence and then uh, give you the links where more evidence can be found. So maybe some preliminaries. Um, so what the project uh, aims to do is to contribute um, to the linguistic history of East Africa and let it also be informative of the general history of East Africa. So when I talk about East Africa, I have a limited uh, view in this talk, uh, Kenya, Tanzania, and a bit of the adjacent areas. Um, and of course, uh, there is a, a, a big person ahead of us, Christopher Eret, and I, I use what he does and I and hope to improve on it, and I'm not going to comment too much on it. The, we will emphasize a lot on language contact, Language contact is an indication of contact with people and of cultural exchange. And that link is what I call the scenario gain. And um, yeah, I emphasize that because uh, I, I, I think I, I, we have to do this as I see historical linguistics as part of the science of history. And then when we present uh, the most likely scenario of how something may have happened, I, I, I want to emphasize every time that, um, that that we are not in predictive science anymore, but that we are for um, a judge, um, uh, an audience to say what what can what scenario can convince other people. So the study of language contact requires lexical reconstruction to know what is a loan word, and historical linguistics will not give us dates. 
could sometimes will give us chronology. And it will give us geography, but that only through interpretation. And when we talk about those language families, uh, we, we shouldn't equate a language family with a particular culture, which is maybe sometimes uh, uh, um, done. Uh, a good example would be the Kalenjian, the different Kalenjian languages, the people who speak those languages, some of them are cattle nomads, the, some of the, well, I would switch, some of them are, uh, uh, do agriculture, and some of them are having to gather us. Um, I, I, these are just some preliminary remarks uh, in the general context, how we can link linguistic history to the general history. And the last one is with in mind that um, it's, I think, a challenge to link uh, linguistic families to uh, certain archaeological cultures. Well, can I go to the next slide? What the, yes. <clears throat> the the players that we are talking about, and I don't have to introduce these players for this audience, I think. Well, I'll do it quickly. Cushitic. Uh, when I talk about Cushitic, we have the groups within Cushitic. Some of I talk about some of them. East Cushitic, within East Cushitic, that is the big group within this is the Bantu of Niger Congo, East Cushitic. Within East Cushitic, we have Omotana, which is then subdivided in, in West, Dasanech, and some other languages in East, Somali, and some other languages. Another group is the Oromo group, uh, linked to Konso de Raitata, but the Oromo are the, 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 the big number that they have expanded in an enormous area. This Yakudulai, and then further north, there's the rest of Cushitic, Highland East Cushitic, Agao, or Central Cushitic, as it can be called and Beja. And then the Tanzanian Cushitic, I will use two terms, Tanzanian Cushitic as being part of South Cushitic. Tanzanian Cushitic or West Rift is simply Burungi, Alakwa, Gorwa, Iraq, and maybe some enigmatic others. More about that later. Nilotic, South Nilotic, we have both sides, Datoga and Kalenjin, and East Nilotic, Maasai, with this huge expansion, but also Turkana, West Nilotic, Doluo for the area that we are talking about, and more or less in this chronological order of entry in the, into Kenya, South Nilotic, East Nilotic, and then West Nilotic. Nilotic. Uh, for the Bantu, there are a lot of Bantu groups. This, the, how they are uh, related uh, um, together, that they are related together is obvious, but how they are related together in subgrouping is far from obvious. There's the Chagarangi cloud, Clade that uh, that Derek Nurse has introduced in this Rift Valley network not, not so long ago. Sukuma and Yaturu, uh, very difficult to, to link to the other languages of Bantu languages of East Africa. Central Kenyan Bantu, East Nyanza, or including Mara Bantu, so that's east of Lake Victoria, Nyanza for Lake Victoria. The Greater Luya group, also more or less in that area. Northeast coast of Bantu, that's a huge group, including uh, Michikenda, Sabaki, Ruvu, which is Luguru, Gogo, Shambal, and then the Southern Highlands and Rufiti, Ruvuma. Of course, then there's also all those languages for which we have only some remainders, but that must have been there before any of these people entered East Africa, uh, conveniently termed here e earlier Eastern African. Dahalo, Sandawe, uh, and all the others uh, that have left some traces. Um, there are some difficulties uh, when we work uh, on the linguistic history. Kushidic, the, there's some solid reconstruction, but very few uh, reconstructed lexicon. That means that we cannot simply look up if a given word is Kushidic, if we find a word in the Bantu language and say, this doesn't look Bantu, is it Kushidic? Uh, that's then a challenge to look it up. And um, there's a sizable uh, part of the proto-Tanzanian Cushitic lexicon that Roland Kiesling and I have reconstructed that we cannot show to be inherited from the rest of Cushitic. It's something that, that we should keep in mind. So if we show that a certain word is, uh, is uh, linked to a Tanzanian, proto-Tanzanian Cushitic in, in the Bantu language, that that doesn't necessarily mean that it is uh, Cushitic in the wider sense. 
the few questions about uh, Cushitic is South Cushitic part of East or not? And there's a lot of nilotic Cushitic contact at multiple levels. Levels, and these two I will I will talk about in this talk. Uh, and challenge is also that several Cushitic hunter-gatherer languages are likely to be the result of a language shift, the halo, and some of them are very poorly documented, like Yaku. Uh, yes, as I said, the Bantu subclassification is very challenging. Uh, part of that is um, that uh, the reason, part of the reason is that some of these Bantu languages, they are uh, reconstitutions of clans from different origins that all spoke Bantu languages and, and that has a specific effect on the, on the outcome of language contact. I'm not going to talk about Bantu too much uh, today. Uh, we started the Tanzanian Cushitic and the first uh, uh, statement is that it is not part of East Cushitic. That is a statement that I will propose here on the weight of evidence. It, I, I cannot say that I can prove this beyond doubt, but uh, this is the the um, what what I uh, I'm, I'm willing to defend to be true on on the the non absolutely not absolutely conclusive evidence that we have. So uh, the evidence that I would say is. Uh, that are common lexical retentions with Beja, Beja, which we, that nobody doubts to be one of the primary branches of Cushitic, that are not, or with Agao, that are not shared with uh, with East uh, Cushitic. So these uh, these innovations are in the first example here a semantic innovation, uh, where South Cushitic and Beja have the same meaning, and East Cushitic developed another meaning. Uh, also in the last example, and then for the other examples, uh, there are some form uh, changes, uh, reduplication in the second one that that South and Beja didn't undergo, and uh, D2L in, uh, in East Cushitic that Beja and South Cushitic did not undergo. Um, other evidence would be uh, development of, of the sounds, uh, sound change. Sound change is, uh, we, uh, what we can say is that South Cushitic has retained a number of sounds that have changed in East Cushitic. Um, so these are, for example, the lateral fricative, uh, the the lateral ejective affricate and the ilio ejective affricate, plus the fact that of the rounded velas, the rounded velas are there in Agao and in South Cushitic, but the challenge is to make this uh, these kind of sound changes as a, as a, as a convincing evidence are uh, um, first of all that the number of common lexical items are can be very very few. For example, for the rounded velar, I have only one cognate between central and south. So, yes, we can say they both have rounded velars, but it's only in, in one uh, lexical item that I would consider cognate. And the history of these sounds in East Cushitic, uh, that is still under study. So, <clears throat> we cannot say that that they uh, changed all these sounds at uh, as a defining sound change to uh, to define East Cushitic. It may have happened several times. So those are the, the challenges to use sound changes. There is a slight indication, yes, that that South Cushitic is primary, but that is um, that has its problems. For morphology, uh, I cannot find any uh, decisive argument, unfortunately. There's more on this in the presentation that I gave at the uh, Historical Linguistics Conference in Heidelberg. And uh, all these uh, can be found on our website on the publications. So the next thing is, okay, so South Cushitic uh, um, being a, a primary branch, but it was influenced by Romo. And uh, this is already something that uh, Roland and I uh, put forward in our reconstruction of uh, Tanzanian Cushitic. 
um, but that we are working on again, uh, but also with Christian and, uh, and try to flesh out a bit more and make it a little bit more prominent because it's quite a remarkable uh, fact that, uh, yeah, that uh, that that needs that that is uh, a challenge to uh, to the interpol to to what it means for the history of the languages and the people. So we have some 20 uh, lexical transfers from Oromo to Proto-South Cushitic, also some grammatical morphemes. Uh, I'm, I'm going to show only one. So the most uh, telling one is Fu'unai in uh, Proto-Tanzanian Cushitic for meat, which is Oromo Foni, and which is then uh, ultimately from, uh, uh, from East Cushitic proto east Christic, so or so meat. Um, so this change from S or from F to F is a typical Oromo change. And uh, these words being all cognate, that means that uh, uh, Tanzanian Kushidic must have borrowed it from uh, Oromo. An early Oromo source, source when the Oromo still had the plot will stop. And the ni ending is a number ending in Oromo. Um, I'll skip the remark, but it's very interesting last Monday. And then there is the, just as one of the other of the 20, I have uh, Gadung, meaning old people in the uh, in Tan in Proto Tanzania Kushidik, the ng, ng, ang, fao plus ng, being a uh, number suffix in uh, Tanzania Kushidik. Meaning old people, Oromo, Gada, for this, the, the whole great system, but also particularly for those people in the Gada great, which is uh, the higher age. And then in order to make this whole, the whole story stick, I should also show you that South Kushidik is actually not part of Oromo, but I will skip that, there's plenty of evidence. And if you have accepted already that South Cushitic is a primary branch, then, then this, uh, I don't need to do this. So how can we interpret this situation? Uh, well, um, uh, for the Oromo, the nice thing is that I mentioned in the written history, there are, there are some sources from 1593 that talk about Oromo. Um, which gives us some indication, uh, a rare instance in African, uh, East African linguistics that we have some indication of time. So they existed at that period of time. And, and that also tells us that the, uh, if we then assume, and I assume that, that there were no Oromo in Tanzania, there's no indication at all for any Oromo in Tanzania, that the contact between Oromo and South Kushidik must have happened in Kenya, and that the entry of uh, Tanzania Kushidik into Tanzania is relatively late. Much later than those very early pastoral Neolithic sites that are found in Tanzania that are uh, sometimes linked to Kushidik. And um, so that means that I would say that those pastoral Neolithic sites were some, sometimes also uh, there's evidence for uh, um, domestic uh, cattle, that they uh, must have been inhabited by speakers of these earlier Eastern African languages, and that they were not all simply only uh, hunter-gatherers. So it has some repercussions. Uh, but that 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 is only if we assume that that presupposes that there were that the current Tanzanian Cushitic languages were not preceded by earlier Cushitic languages that since, have since then disappeared. Um, of course, uh, we can we can uh, say that uh, the, the simplest assumption is that there were no people that have disappeared, but we have to think about the Yakudulai. Uh, Bonnie and, and Mauro have proposed also in the Rift Valley Network series uh, last year that there but there was contact between Yakudulai and Hadza, and also that Yakudulai may be the, the first southward Kushidic expansion. So uh, uh, the similar thing with Oromo and South Kushidic should be done with uh, Yakudulai and South Kushidic. I've 
started doing that and I'm not presenting it here. I'm still working on that, but I would say there is some evidence also for Yakudulai influence on South Cushitic, but again, that South Cushitic is not uh, one of the languages within Yakudulai. Um, finishing this part of the story, I'm, I'm continuing with the Cushitic Nilotic language contact. And we uh, we worked on this, uh, Christian and I, um, uh, re, re uh, assessing this proposal of proto bas. Proto bas is something that Heiner Rotland and uh, Rein Heiner, who was it, Rotland and Vossen have uh, proposed in Sugia. Uh, some decades ago, as a language that, a Cushitic language, an Omotana Cushitic language that must have ex existed a long time ago, um, uh, due to uh, all the loans, Cushitic loans that we find in the Nilotic languages. Um, in uh, this putative proto bas is separate from the other Omotana languages in their argumentation because it uh, underwent two sound changes. One of them is the centraliza centralization of A to E in the context of a pharyngeal consonant, and the other one is the split of uh, the R into two different rotics. Uh, for the first uh, sound rule, um, I'm, we're not convinced at all because uh, that is a very common allophonic variation in Cushitic that you centralized A uh, in the context of a pharyngeal. So if we just assume that the Nilotic languages have borrowed the words as they heard it, as they were pronounced, uh, then we don't need a, a sound rule to account for this. The split of the two into two rotics is based on two items. Uh, uh, the, at least uh, the, the rotic indicated with the capital R is in two items, the mar. Uh, Mar has a much wider, uh, for the, in the meaning calf, has, has a much wider distribution than uh, than Omotana, and also within Nilotic has a very wide distribution. So it's uh, difficult to uh, to put the blame only on proto -bas. And the other one, R, is in our view from West Omotana and not from East Omotana. If we don't accept that all these loans uh, are from one specific uh, language that has disappeared, proto -bas. Uh, We have a new look at all the proposed uh, um, uh, transfers and we allow for the possibility that they were from several separate uh, borrowing events. Doing that, we see the, the conclusions are this transfer from uh, proto omotana into proto south nilotic with a, a pretty strong cultural dominance of proto omotana specifically in the in the number paradigm so all the numbers for 20 30 up to 90 are borrowed from proto omotana in, in proto south nilotic but also in the number 6 to 10 um doing this we regularize a bit so for some of them we uh, we cannot show that it is uh, specifically uh, South Nilotic. For some of them, we can show that it is South Nilotic. And then we just take them together that those for which we can only show Kalenjin that we show, that we take them, that it is all the same event of South Nilotic and uh, Proto South Nilotic and Proto Botana, plus four relatively basic verbs. Uh, so this points at a uh, yeah, rather intense contact, but but specifically, I wonder what kind of social linguistic situation. How can we imagine a situation where you borrow these higher numerals? The fact that you borrow higher numerals is, in, in my view, very common. But in the in this situation, this with these cultures that we may associate with the Cushitic and Nilotic, how did they find the need to borrow these uh, higher numerals from Omotana? Separately, there is some, not much, but a little bit of transfer from West Omotana into Proto-South Nilotic as well. Uh, there are not many, but they uh, two of them refer to male uh, domestic animals. Does that tell us a little bit about 
the nature of this cultural influence. All these more interpretive questions I want to discuss with you, so keep them in mind. Some a little bit from East Omotan into Protocalengin, very little from Oromoid, can't say much about it, and the same for Yakudulai. Uh, uh, so yes, we, uh, um, we hope that this will be published, the paper is under review. Let's hope it will be accepted. <clears throat> Um, I've I've drawn a, a oh, oh actually uh, my student is then student assistant Nina has drawn a beautiful map of all these contacts. Um, I call it a map because uh, I remember one of the Rift Valley Network uh, presentations where we we looked at the map and one of the archaeologists present say why do we always do you linguists always assume that the Cushitic people were east of Lake Turkana and an allotic west of Lake Turkana. And I I think that none of the linguists has such a specific interpretation of the random arrows that were put on the map. So this is why I have my kind of abstract map um, to, to, um, to be aware that we're playing the, the scenario game when we look at an actual geographical map. Um, we have not, I have in the article, we haven't dealt with South Cushitic Kalenjin contact, but there is plenty. That was already remarked upon by Chris Errett in his, uh, his PhD thesis. Um, so, okay, with my critical look, I looked at uh, all those uh, proposals by, uh, by Errett. Um, not accepting all of them after our uh, new reconstruction of uh, proto tanzanian Cushitic, but going through several dictionaries, such as the Pukot and Nandi dictionaries, finding quite a few more. So, um, yeah, we have now about 50, uh, some of them better than others, um, still working on it. And uh, we're working on this also with uh, with uh, uh, Christian, but uh, Ronald has joined us um, and he pointed out that uh, we have to include that Toga as well, because when we did the reconstruction of uh, Tanzania and Kushidik, uh, we, we notified, and especially Roland in his Habil, he noted a lot of uh, contact at, at various levels between uh, Datoga, pre-Datoga, pre-pre-Datoga, and, and the stages of Tanzanian Cushitic. So, yes, this is my new map uh, where we show that Oromo uh, just put randomly in this uh, schema somewhere uh, had influence on South Cushitic. And South Cushitic, I, I put this extension here that there was then a prolonged contact with Datoga but certainly also a lot of contact with Kalenjin. Now, on the on the Mondays fortnightly, we are working on Taita Kushitic. Taita Kushitic is the language that is proposed long time ago in an article by Eret and Nurse on the basis of uh, yeah, Kushitic loans in the Taita Bantu languages. Um, so we, again, we are just looking at all, we looked at all the evidence again, and we have uh, accepted uh, some of it, except didn't discarded some of it, and looked at a lot of other items that didn't look very Bantu. And and what we find is a number of the Sagala Bantu language in Taita Hills are from Cushitic, and for which South Cushitic is actually the best fit. Um, uh, 10 plus 7, which is also with South Kushitic is the best fit, but yeah, we don't have other uh, Kushitic cognates for these South Kushitic words. So uh, that could also mean that both South Kushitic and, and Taita Kushitic got them from uh, another source. And for two of those, we... Uh, we, we really don't know, uh, it's hard to decide whether we can, uh, we would, should uh, contribute to South Cushitic or to this, um, uh, yeah, vague earlier Eastern African, what was there before. 
some of them, Dahalo is, is the closest fit. And uh, yeah, the Dahalo and South Kushidik, that is also something to address at some point. Is Dahalo uh, related to these other South Kushidik languages or not? And that is a difficult and open question. There are some other uh, strata in, in the Taita Bantu languages from North Coastal uh, area, Somali, Afro Swahili, some Maasai, and a little bit of Kalenjin or Romoyaku. Um, what is that remark? I don't know. I don't know what I wanted to say. But uh, something similar can be done and has been done for Chagakushidik. Uh, by Derek in his uh, in his uh, dissertation, Parakushitic, uh, by me in my book on the uh, the making of the mixed language Ma'a, where I I come up with some eighty Kushitic words that are the oldest layer of this mixed language and which are presumably from the original Kushitic language that they spoke before they shifted to the Parabanto language. So uh, having uh, evidence for Cushitic in the shape of the loans in Bantu languages in the, those three mountain areas, uh, we, we may assume that, this, that all those three Cushitic, former Cushitic languages are related, but it's not so easy to, to actually show that because um, uh, there's, there's not that much uh, overlap. Uh, that in in the in the lexical sets that we have found, and also because when you look at uh, the devil come, yes. Um, so yes, my map has extended again a little bit. Taita Kushitic is put in, and uh, that that must have uh, been linked to South Kushitic. If time permits, no. I am skipping Bantu. Uh, I'm we are working on Cushitic loans in, in, in Bantu and there are lots of proposals by Eret, but also by other people. We're going through all of them, expanding some of them. This needs a critical reassessment because you know uh, some of them may be uh, may may maybe a, a, a wild goose, so how do you say that? And uh, um the the hypothesis that I, I am entertaining is that that some of those uh, loans, Kushitic uh, loans in, in Bantu, is because a number of the Bantu languages went to the area of East Nyanza, East Lake Victoria, where they would have met with South Kushitic and Kalenjin people who were there together. Going to skip it, but there's also some indication of, of a southern root of some Kushitic loan words for which I there's no uh, possible, no explanation at all, which is a problem to me. Um, uh, there are some, we can say that uh, East African Bantu, uh, they, when they have specific, they often have specific terms for male domestic animals, but, but in most cases, those are lexical innovations, sometimes because of uh, borrowings from Kushidik, but also from other lexical innovations. So there seems to be something about uh, the male domestic animals in East African Manto. They had they had domestic animals, but uh, possibly um, the whole uh, uh, culture of um, um, of uh, what is it of of, of getting the, the of getting uh, the best offspring uh, by mating that was maybe something new or maybe male domestic because they you they they only uh, were uh, doing uh, trading in male ones um, but uh, we can try to make some interpretations of why it is specifically male that became important for east african bantu the very little agricultural transport from kushidik into east bantu and there are some in the in the fauna in the animals, but very often with uh, interesting semantic changes. So this is my huh? this is the wrong map. Let, let let me skip it because you have seen it already. 
uh, I want to uh, uh, entice you to to play the scenario game. I, I have some uh, huge questions. If South Cushitic was an early split of Cushitic, presumably uh, they stayed for a very long time in Kenya. But where? I mean, if the contact with the Oromo, that, that would point to the, to the northeast, that is somewhere here, contact to the Kalenjin uh, in the west of the, of the Rift Valley, most likely. Uh, but then, then the fact that there was a related Cushitic in Taita and, 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 and in Pare, in Amanjaro, that points to this area. Um, and then how did they end up here? Because the, the, the point of diffusion of Tanzanian Cushitic is roughly Kondoa, from Kondoa, uh, Burungi, uh, and, and then split off and the rest, they went north to, uh, to where, uh, well, so where am I from here? They went north to this area where the Iraqo are now. But if they were either here or here or here, somewhere from Kenya, they must have ended up in uh, central Tanzania in the Kondoa area. Which route? The prolonged contact with Datoga would suggest uh, through here, East Nyanza, through the Mara area, and then somehow to Kondoa. But if they were already here in Kilimanjaro, and with the proposal of... Um, uh, Chaga and 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 and, uh, and Rangi being very very old uh, group of Bantu, it would also be uh, of the case of least uh, of the easiest uh, lines to draw on a map to bring them from here. Um, I think that's what I have on this slide. Yes, so with all these contacts between uh, uh, protocol engine and and, uh, and South Cushitic, but also protocol engine in East Omotana, that also gives you a very, very rough overlap in time period of these groups must have existed in more or less, they must have overlapped in, in, in time. And the Tale Cushitic, that is something that Eret has proposed, that there were Cushitic speaking people in this Mara area. He calls them Tale after the Cushitic word for lion, but I don't think there's any Cushitic word for lion. Uh, and Bastin has proposed that that is a, a Bantu word. But uh, nonetheless, there may have been, uh, regardless of the, of the name, there may have been uh, some evidence for Cushitic in this area. It's difficult to say. Um, yes, those were my questions. And the floor is open for you to give me the answers. So thank you very much, uh, Martin, for your uh, presentation. I'd like now to open the floor for questions and commentary from our audience. So participants can ask a voice question by raising their hand using the raise hand function in the reactions menu at the bottom of the screen. So if you raise your hand, I'll ask you to unmute and then you can ask your question. Alternatively, participants can write their questions using the chat function of the Zoom application, after which I'll read them for you uh, to Martin uh, to answer. Um, and as a reminder, this webinar is being recorded. So if, you'd, uh, uh, if you ask a voice question, your voice will be recorded and it'll be made available later when the video is placed online. Uh, so uh, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll follow Martin um, and uh, open the floor for uh, questions. I'll, uh, I'll take the prerogative as, as, as host and, 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 and try a first one. Can we go back to one of those uh, maps? These kinds of maps? Yeah. Martin, yeah. you're channeling you're channeling your Piet Mondrian with these uh, with these maps. My what? Your Piet Mondrian. I get this. I get this very. Oh yes, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's oh, nice. It's uh, <laughs> modern art. Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> certainly modern. Uh, certainly art as well. So I, I I need you to walk me through this a little bit. 
uh, are we going from sort of an earlier time at the top down to a later time at the bottom? Is that what this is? What this is mapping? Yeah. Yes. I and I I I realized I should I should make layers of maps, several maps, um, and um, I was um, yeah I can't do that uh, without uh, wow. Nina's help. So uh, <laughs> no, I can do that, but uh, I I didn't have time. Yes. So the 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 Nil the South Nilotic or the Nilotic Omotana contact uh, that is earlier in in time. Uh, and then, of course, uh, when Omotana becomes West Omotana and East Omotana, that is a little bit later in time. Uh, I think uh, that uh, Oromo, uh, yes, uh, that is, I can't say whether Oromo was at the same time as Omotana or as West or East Omotana. Don't know how to say that. Uh, but um, Potentially at the same time as, uh, well, certainly at the same time as uh, South Cushitic, but South Cushitic, I believe, has thousands of years of presence in Kenya. And, um, and Yakudulai is, I mean, uh, it's, it's presumably an old, uh, an early split of, of East Cushitic. Uh, so probably also um, this uh, earlier than than Omotana, and also for a very long period of time. Uh, Dulai now spoken in the Ala Highlands in South Ethiopia and Yaku, yes, in the, on on Mount uh, Kenya, uh, yeah. And uh, these dashed outlines rather than the solid outlines, is that is that shorthand for anything as well? Well, in the way it was meant to be shorthand for the time, for later splits. Okay. All right. That's clear. Uh, so from top to bottom, we're dealing with sort of time. Uh, from uh, left to right, is that indicating anything? Is, the, is that an indication of geographical... Uh, I, I I attempted a geographical sort of geographical representation, um, and uh, but then I have to put in Oromo and Yakudulai and and uh, yeah, <laughs> and, and then if I put those um, where they are more or less geographically, then it gets uh, becomes a mess. So no, the, I have in... to say I, I I appreciate sort of the abstraction away from geography here because as it's been said many times we don't exactly know where these contacts happened and um i i think it's nice to to, to put it this way because you know because we don't and we don't want to suggest that we know something that we don't so i i appreciate i appreciate the way that you've tried to do that here yes and i was trying to avoid but 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 what you cannot avoid is that you 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 do get interpretations again, and I I have made some differences, and yes, uh, yes, uh, yes, yes. Thank you, thank you for the question. Yeah, I quite like it. Yeah. I see our colleagues are still a little bit quiet, um, so I'll uh, I'll ask a second question. Way back at the very beginning of the presentation, you don't need to arrow back to where it is. I, I, um, there was a mention that there's this sort of dearth of cognate lexicon in South Cushitic versus the rest of larger Cushitic. Mm. Um, and this is like this is evident to anybody who sits down with like you know trying to trying to do elicitation or trying to you know compare words that they have in say Gorba, for example, putting putting you know. In, in my shoes, and then having a dictionary of Somali or Beja nearby, right? Um, yeah. Can't find much. Yeah. Um, but do you have any thoughts on what this might tell us about the history of the South Cushitic language and, and their speakers? Like, why why is there such a, a, a dearth of, of cognate sets? Um, I, 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 the, it is it is less dramatic than I thought a few years ago, so it is it is promising that we do find more. 
uh, when we look carefully. Um, uh, there is maybe also in the method, uh, the, the, the big dictionaries are there for Somali or Romo. And we need very good dictionaries for Beja and for especially uh, Central Cushitic for Agao. Mm. Um, <clears throat> there is also the challenge in the methods that um, that those those languages that we really, if if indeed South Cushitic is a primary branch, then then those should be helpful, and then um, Central Cushitic has been. In such an intense contact with atheosemitic that a lot a lot of uh, yeah challenges come up there, uh, and the one that is least in contact with with atheosemitic is Bilin, uh, but we I I do not have a good dictionary of Bilin, and then Beja, uh, yeah has had this very 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 long history where a lot happens and um, yeah I'm. I'm using Wedekind's dictionary of Beja, which 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 looks extensive, but actually is not. So sometimes oh. I, I I have to go back to Rheinisch and and Martin van Over's uh, dictionary is growing. That's nice. So more is going to come. Uh, but then why? What is the what explanation could we have in a positive sense? Then that that. Of course, what what we hope to find is uh, indications of of the earlier Eastern African, uh, there, yeah, peoples different and their languages having influenced uh, uh, proto South Cushitic, proto Tanzanian Cushitic. Um, we are looking again at all the links with the Sandawi, and. Um, this dictionary of Sandawe uh, that uh, that Eric has so nicely typed up uh, on uh, uh, Tendra's notes is also very nicely added at all possible South Cushitic or uh, links that he could imagine. Yeah, and he's good at that. Yeah. Um, so going through them, all of them. Uh, the nice thing about it is that you 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 can sort of. Be sure that you have every, every possible candidate if you go, if you go, if you only look at uh, the proposals of a of, Kushidic uh, uh, link. Um, but uh, for him, they're all Kushidic to, uh, to Sandawi. And uh, if we, uh, if we have an open mind, then for quite a few of them, we can say, well, I mean, in case it's one of those words for which, which we have no further Cushitic uh, cognate, uh, and then then we uh, we won't decide that it is uh, from Cushitic to uh, to Sandawe, and maybe could just as well be the other way around. So mm -hmm. that 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 is a source that is developing now. Yeah, I see. Bonnie has her hand up. Go ahead, Bonnie. Hi, there is a 1992 uh, Bleem Dictionary. It's not super long, but it may have things that aren't in Rhinish. I'm uh, it's in Fidel's. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have that one. I have that one. I have that. Yeah, I have it. Yes, and and I, I yeah, I'm not so good. Yes, but. Uh, Yes, Jonathan, we were using it. Yes. Yeah, me either. So I was wondering what, what's your impression of the retention of a, a proto Cushitic lexicon is in South Cushitic versus Central Cushitic or North Cushitic? Oh, I don't know. Uh, so compare the retention in South Cushitic to the retention of Cushitic in, in Beja or in Agao. That would be a very sensible thing to do, but I haven't done that. Yeah. I see Tom has his hand up. Uh, Tom. Uh, yes. Thanks, Martin, for this uh, nice talk. Um, I have a kind of general um, uh, question with respect to the 
rough um, chronology of, of linguistic populations in Eastern Africa. I mean, I understand your argument that South, uh, you know, earlier it was thought Cushitic is old and also South Cushitic would an argument, um, be an argument for that. And you say it's actually later. Um, that's, um, I, I, I get that. But um, my question is, if you look at, in particular, at the picture in Kenya, where you have all those different Cushitic branches, Mm -hmm. And in, on top of that, a kind of mesh of lexicon uh, distributed in Bantu and and and, and Nilotic and other uh, languages. Would you still not conclude that overall, if you compare Cushitic, Nilotic, and Bantu, that in particular Kenya was really for a while Cushitic territory? Where, yeah, yeah, uh, where no, no. Basically, a lot of the branching happened, and and and, and of course also languages you know died out and and the family tree was truncated but so is that your conclusion that actually yeah. all of kenya not always focusing on sub ranges actually was cushitic territory before nilotic and bantu entered the area is that it was early east early east african plus cushitic plus south cushitic plus south cushitic for a very long time i would say uh thousands of years okay and and uh and uh, uh, now I'm just uh, just what I'm imagining, and on the basis of that, it is if I if I see South Pacific as a primary split, then then the the the, the image that I have in mind is that uh, they they came into Kenya a long time ago. They stayed for a very long time, um, and and that the other Kushitic peoples they came much later. The, um, you, you see, you, yeah, you, you will get east. Uh, you get uh, Omotana coming in from the north, and then uh, spreading uh, west Omotana, but especially Somali and Rendile, and 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 they that major movements. Then also the Oromo. That was all very much later, and um, that South Nilotic. Uh, was later than the presence of South Cushitic, South, South Nilotic people. But I imagine is that when they came into Kenya, that they met South Cushitic speakers, and that's maybe also why there's a little bit more uh, influence of South Cushitic on South Nilotic. Not, not a little bit, quite a lot more South Cushitic influence on South Nilotic than the other way around, and that they together. Uh, were together for quite some time in this area between Lake Turkana and Uganda, and 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 there was a I suppose that there was a lot of contact between them, and so uh, the different archaeological cultures that you find there, the Savannah Pastoral Neolithic and the Elmetaitan, I would interpret as as not not necessarily along the lines of Cushitic and Nilotic. But along the lines of the kind of culture that they developed, uh, you 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 see also among the Pokot they have they have uh, um, people groups part of them concentrating on on agriculture and part of them concentrating on on animal husbandry, uh, and uh, I think that uh, that is also something that that developed there that it was a late development that that. Um, that all of a sudden people would then maybe uh, go to concentrate on 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 just living on on the cows and uh, and then also needing a wider area and and having larger herds and and um, developing the the Datoga lifestyle and with that um, yeah making actual movement of people also uh, easier and and necessary. I, that is the kind of scenario game that that uh, that I would put on. Okay, thanks. The, there's a nice uh, PhD dissertation uh, that was recently produced. Uh, our colleague Sam Beer shared it with me that talks about the New Air people and um, how culturally they were uh, differentiated also according to sort of subsistence patterns maybe not as um maybe not as uh, sharply as the as the pocoat that you suggest but there's a nice dissertation on that which maybe i can uh, i can send on to you yes please yes yes, yes 
but I mean, yeah, it sort of it sort of resonates with uh, with what you were just saying. Um, we have a, a written question in the chat from Hope Morgan, who apologizes for not being able to uh, ask it uh, viva voce, uh, but uh, she has one question and then a follow up. So the first one is. I'm curious whether in the course of the project, you have run across relationships connected to gestural traditions, such as counting on the hands. Anything hmm. to say to that, Martin? Oh, I have something on counting on the hands. <laughs> I didn't look at that, but um, just a coincidence. Where is that? When I talk about the... Um, Numbers. Numbers and, and Bantu. Fungate, yeah. Uh, Fungate is, uh, was known to be uh, one of those uh, Cushitic loans in Bantu spread all over East, uh, Eastern Bantu and linked to the Proto-Tanzanian Cushitic Fang, meaning seven. Fungate is seven. Uh, but uh, I suppose I propose something different and that is Fungate T, close in the middle. And the reasoning for that is that the way to count, uh, for example, among the Chaga, is, uh, well, if you go to six, and then seven is this. So you close in the middle. Funga T. So that is <laughs> that is what I have in the slides. And that's actually also the only the only thing for gestures that uh, that I've come across uh, in this project, uh, but this is my uh, something. Maybe I should. That's very that. nice. Yeah. The follow up question that Hope has here is: How profitable do you think studying gestures in different communities today might be in shedding light on the distant past? Oh. Hmm. I think there's quite a lot of contact going on in terms of, of gesturing, seeing that you have, uh, I mean, yeah, uh, Victoria and I, we talk about this now and again, we're not about this specific question, but she points out that a lot of the, the African gestures, uh, the real lexical gestures are, uh, are quite widespread and that goes across languages and 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 uh, white areas so that would mean that uh, uh, that can be easily spread the gestures for the numbers they uh, they can be sometimes very specific so for Maasai it's completely different than than from the rest of uh, East Africa and uh, so I think these are very uh, but they can be very specific. With the numbers, I there is something about numbers and secrecy. I would or or secrecy is a, secrecy is a big word, but you don't want to be always specific with numbers. And uh, so, in uh, in Iraqi storytelling, for example, whenever a number occurs, you don't pronounce it, but you gesture. So um, and maybe numbers are a separate entity when we talk about gestures in contact and um, how profitable will it be uh, I think it will be very difficult to to draw it will be difficult because it will be difficult to reconstruct lexical gestures uh, because I think they are unless they go with a specific spoken word. So maybe those that that sometimes have gestures going with idiophones, maybe those would be uh, would be profitable to study. But I don't know them very well. Sorry, Hope. A very vague answer. Brilliant. Thank you, Martin. I see that we have a lull in the questions stop i will stop to share and you i will stop, stop recording, recording. <laughs>